Yo guys, what's up? I decided to do a quick cash challenge in which I just, you know, try to move up the stakes a little bit while playing. So here we go. Down there, there's the graph, so you can follow the action. And let's just see how this goes. I'm an MTT player, you know, so I'm not too experienced when it comes to cash, but I do enjoy to play it every now and then. And I thought if I play it, I might as well do a little bit of a challenge and upload it to YouTube so you guys can see how a fish like me tries to win a little bit of money in these. So how it would work every time we make, um, or like we win a buy-in, we move up stakes, if we lose a buy-in, we move down, and just see how it goes. Um, yeah, not a professional or anything, guys, so take it easy on me. Let's just see how it goes, and have a little, little bit of a good time, talk about things, and yeah. We're gonna start with the c bet here, flop a flush draw, and there's already the profit, man. Cash game's way too easy, I should switch instantly. <laughs> we folded the big plan, so that's the reason we were down 30 cents, but you know, look at peak. Peaks already, man. We have a huge sample size of a total of three hands, which definitely shows our big edge in these stakes. I mean, if you're up 30 cents on that many hands, or if you're up actually 66 cents, you're definitely beating the game. I come in here for the call. I think we can three bet, we can fold. Um, yeah, no idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you kind of come in here for the call, though. That's a good turn. Pretty much giving us the nizzles, it feels like. Um, I feel like we try to get two streets here from an overpair. So let's just start with the big bet. We will have a lot of give ups here, so we will not get much action from that anyhow. And if there's an overpair, I want to extract some, uh, like a lot of value here. So let's try that. Alright. Questions are what we. I mean, I guess we could just go with something like uh, 8. Let's go for like 9.25, see if he can make the call. Oh. I think like he always calls it an overpair, at least that's what I feel like. So I thought we could go for big value in that spot. Man, we're off to a good start here, I like this, <laughs> I like this. <laughs> so you know, as soon as we're up $30, we'll move up to end of 50. And if we lose that, we'll move down again. I think we can have been here. Like there's a lot of weak players. I think in cash game you, you usually see like weak players because they don't have like the maximum buy-in. You should always play with the most money. At least that's what the good players say. And I guess I listen to them. It's always a smart idea, guys. If there's people that are better than you, listen to them. They're most like that's most likely a reason for they are better. Right. Um But yeah. Like, this will not be like super educational for like most people, but thought it would be fun and you can see our fish our cash game or an empty fish does in the cash game streets folding here should be perfectly fine as well might be too loose to peel that i know i feel like playing some parts so let's do that i'm just gonna mark it here build the gaze of spades i would certainly continue there i know any of these guys but i just like keep this in the back of my head every time they don't have the maximum buy in they are probably not best players so yeah today is uh, Tuesday evening I'm going to Berlin tomorrow and I know today I just talked to my brother and all this stuff and getting ready for the trip man I'm excited playing some more live poker maybe I even play like for the first time some live cash games I've never done that before and it would be certainly interesting to jump into the pools there and you know give it a lot of shot if I bust the MTTs, which is hopefully not the case, you know, we play some 300 euro buy-ins, not too big. And yeah, maybe can win some money. Would be nice, would be nice. I'm just gonna fold the 910. I think, I think like in oh, like Snap or like Zoom games, usually you, you gotta be careful that you don't fold too much, you know, that you just like go into auto fold mode and make for some good hands. Let's refresh this. Ooh. <laughs> we have like 12 hands. What a sample size, what a sample size. Pretty good flop here. We get them hearts. Um, I think we just call. If you take in cash games, you don't raise your like, flash draws too often if you don't want to run a multiple streets buff. And I mean, we're out of position, man. He overpots now. I think we can just fold. I mean, we are pretty deep here, you know, so we can extract some value. But. Yeah, I think we just fold the turn here nonetheless. Seems like pretty weak to be honest, but like the problem is like we're out of position, right? So if you hit, we check, and then he checks it back with like almost everything, and we just lose. I feel that sucks really hard, so let's just fold in the turn. 
I was just bored by like my MTT game is a little bit weak when I call too often, but flush draws out of position and therefore not get the value once I hit, so the cards become pretty bad. Because usually you know you have like 20% to hit your flush in the river, right? So when you're on the turn obviously. So it's important that you get some value, you know, when they bet like half pot or something. Um I don't think we need to bluff here. Or we should bluff here. King should hit this check in range. Not too hard, but like ace king and shit. I guess we can bet like small here on the river. Or like I don't know like what do you bet here on the river? Like 95? Maybe try to push him off like sevens. Eights. Like I don't feel like he's strong here at all. And we can have like a queen for sure. That's exactly how I play queen. Even like ace 10, you know? We can, for, we can go for value like that. Yeah. I feel like ace 10 is calling. Um, makes sense. Not sure if the bluff is bad or not. Not sure. So yeah, we're just one tabling. Let's focus the maximum. Uh, actually, I, I heard that you like two and a half x the button or something, or three x. So let's try that. Ooh, ooh! I like where this is going. He checks it. Just gonna fire the c bet and try to get some multiple streets of value here from him. Ah, he calls. I like that. I don't have the heart on the turn, but I think we need to fire again, and then we can decide if we want to check back the river. Or bet again. He calls. Ooh, that's a river. And before he has queen four. Oh my god, he needs pot. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to raise you guys. Um, so let's think it through. Yeah, I guess I guess we're supposed to raise. Like, I'm not sure if he defends queen four suited. Four through suited, he blocks super hard. Eight four suited, yeah. Like this is definitely an easy jam. Hopefully he has the ace of hearts, just cause it off. But I don't think he has like too many pot folds. He has ace king, man. That's pretty unlucky, man. What a dirty river. What a dirty river. Man, we're running good in the cash game streets. Pew! Look at that craft, man. Fucking peaking. Peaking. <laughs> oh. Shout some man Shay Carver there. He's not too active on YouTube, but the Twitch people know him. Pretty cool dude, pretty cool dude. So yeah, now we got the pocket fires, man. Cash games is just way too easy, you know? That's the reason I play MTTs. I'm just too skilled for cash game. We'll take all the money out of the six max pools. <laughs> Oh, he's just trolling here. I know that like cash game players are usually much better than MTT players. Which makes sense, you know? Oh my god, man, like... <laughs> well, oh my god, look at that sizing. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Just gonna call. Give him the check call, check call. I give him a little tank on the turn. So it's more likely to go for like three streets of value with like ace check, I feel. So he might put us on like 9-10, maybe like a beast, weak ace. So I feel like we should tank here and then check and maybe raise, maybe check all river. I'm not quite sure. Probably check raising. It really doesn't change much here. Hopefully he bets again. Come on, ace king. Ah, he checks it. He checks it. Let's see what he had. Let's see what he had. $52, man. I like this. He had ace jack. All right. I think that's a fine check back, but like, I don't really... I mean, I could lead the river as if it was like turning a 9-8 into a club there, but I don't really think that makes too much sense. So, yeah. Man, but like poker is easy when you flop sets, guys. <laughs> you should definitely start doing that. Seems like a pretty good strat. He limps. I guess we just limp in here. I mean, folding is not an option, I don't think. We have like a suited ace. We can just pop a monster and, yeah, you know, stack them. So yeah, we're definitely not folding here, we're getting pretty good odds to see a flop, so let's do that. Like his limp fold when he overcards doesn't make any sense. I mean, limping the default first place doesn't make too much sense usually. So we flop a gut shot. Um, Bot is rather dry, he checks it back. It's kind of interesting now, we could fire out two bar barrels. Because I don't feel like anyone has a flush here too often, so I guess that's what we do. If we bet the turn here, we gotta bet the river if the diamond doesn't hit. Because he will have like ace king with an ace of diamonds with the king of diamonds quite often here, I think. So yeah, I think it's kind of mandatory to bet the river again. I think we go with something like 525. Looks pretty valuey. Fold! Come on, just ace king with the ace of diamonds in the muck, dude. Oh, he's tanking. Maybe it's some like pocket 
eights, pocket sixes. He raises us, dude. Uh, we're not going for a crazy jam. He will just fold. <laughs> Alright. I think that was also one of the lessons x told me. You shouldn't bluff that much in cash games. You know, I, I like to bluff. But people... The problem about cash game, like the difference to MTTs in cash game in regards to bluffing is just that they, in cash game you can always rebuy, right? But in the MTT, if you put them on, if you put them on a bluffing hero card, you know, and you lose, you're just out of the tournament most of the times. And so there's like a completely different level of pressure on people, which makes people more likely to hero card in cash game and opposite of uh, tournaments. Here we're just going to the MPs, going to the MPs pretty short. And now we're just gonna fire out a sea bat. And I gotta be careful with the bluffs. We get punished like we made two bluffs for it so far, I think. We got punished both times. Um yeah, not a good not a good not a good uh frequency. Not a, what the fuck do you call that? Not a good I don't know, not a good amount of God I'm a fucking retarded. I don't know, I don't know. I'm charming guys, take it easy on me. Little Bob here, expense. Some of these nicknames, dude. HH2HH. What up? We got the bar, man. They are scared. They don't want to play parts. Because they know that I flop a set with everything. Even with 10 for off, man, we can flop sets. <laughs> uh, running hard, bluff's not working out. Good combo. He limps again, dude. I'll give him a race here. Actually, in cash game, everything you make is bigger. You know, usually in like MTGs over 4 x here, so let's just go for 5x. Wow, the limb fold man is quite nice. I could make a note on him. Uh, limb folds, 100 big plants, 5x. I'm not sure if I give him the fish tag for that. Like, I just. Maybe it's correct to limp a lot UTG, but probably not. It's not the most common strategy. We get the walk, feels good man, feels good. We get the walk. There's a little bit of music in the background, I'm not sure if you hear it. Um, you know, just to make things a little bit smoother. And now we're just waiting for some suited hands, because suited is always good. Queen check office will be good enough to open here. I do not think we can call an open though, but he limps. I will give him a raise again, I mean, let's see if people like to fall to these 5x raises on the button you know we just pick up strategy while playing i think it's reason like it's reasonable to raise the limp here and play like a pot in position with the betting lead and he just beats half pot man i have no idea what to do here i i mean i have no idea what he has here probably like maybe like ace eight suited type hands i mean we, had, we have no spade like with the queen of spades we can certainly continue there but like with nothing pretty much <laughs> just uh two over cards i think it would be a little bit too loose to continue there we could give him a raise and just not believe a story and like try to wrap ace really hard, but that just that's much better if he has the queen if if, if we have the queen of spades, right? Then we can bluff turns and rivers. And even like get there sometimes, you know. So we defend check seven. Not my flop, not my president. Just gonna check it. And give up here. Queen's like a pretty bad to turn to be bluffing too much here. I mean if he had like spades, we could bluff them. So yeah. I'm trying to play like not like a super balanced style here because first of all I don't know how to play that. I didn't do like the math and cash games to GTO work at all. <laughs> I would just like try to bluff and I have like some backdoor draws and try to bluff when I have. I don't mean it just makes sense to bluff. With like ES5 for example you could hit the 4 for like pretty much the nizzles if it's a non-spade. And I really felt like the guy that checked the flop wasn't all too strong. But yeah I probably was wrong. Um Maybe bluff this. I don't know, man. These cash game players. We will just continue flopping sets. I think that's a good strategy. Okay, we got a gut shot this time. Um, I mean, usually hits like the big man's defending range more than my opening range. I do things though. That we should bet. That's the problem when we don't have a heart, when we put it like the sea bed. I mean, I would really love to continue bluffing on the queen. He just leads. Well, we'll just take it. God, we're getting on, dude. We gotta be careful here with like putting up like sea beds like that with the ace 8, maybe. Like, if we had the ace of hearts, they're so much better, you know? So much freaking better. Wow, he is super short. Um, 
This is kind of awkward now. I'm not used to play like versus these short stacks, dude. Are we just supposed to like back call this? Let's like back to spades here. He snaps it. Alright, now we're just gonna check and call. I guess I guess I have a bad T for value. Pocket eights. He has king six off. Alright. Man, we are getting owned, dude. This is so weird. I guess like he champs like most of his buffs down the flop, like pocket six he might even champ. So it is bad. But like I'm not we could have checked called as well, you know. But it's so weird, like well, how does he have like ten big blinds there and like this cash game? Alright, we just wait for a good hand. The ace is coming along, you know. Mart is not working on the snap table, so I do not have that the support going. Alright, we're gonna squeeze it up here, I like that. Not too much uh, through betting going on on my end so far. 5x. Oh, pot is usually good. Alright, let's, let's go bigger than that. We win raise UDG. Alright, we got a call. Big quest is pretty likely to come along as well. Then we play like a pot of. Well, there's $10 already in the middle. He goes for a re raise now. That's just really awkward. I mean, if he has ace, he has aces. I think flatting looks like stronger than charming. Nah, maybe not. Maybe it's supposed to flatty. But like, he will call anyhow, right? If you just rip it in here. He gets like pretty good odds then. Just checks and get it in. Oh, no ace. No queen. No diamond. Oh my god. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Cash game too easy. I'm not sure. Like, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't stick it in there with ace queen, but you know, I'm not the guy who should charge you at all. And we're up to 57 bucks. That means we are up 26.92. That means that means just a couple more cents, man, and we can move up the stakes. We can move up the stakes. <laughs> a dream is coming true, team. A dream is coming true. Wow. I mean, that is quite easy. Cash game just too easy for me. <laughs> it's so sick. It's so sick. Like we we played so bad so far. At least like everything. Went wrong, you know, nothing worked out so far. But, you have 27 bucks, you know, something you just run good. Yeah, it's a good feeling, guys. Sometimes, there's just not an ace and you can hold. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Now we got ace to suit in a small plan. I feel like there's a pretty good hand to be three betting here. So, that's what we're going to do. You don't get the shot. I'll um, just raise the blind with blind. I should really get like these custom bet, but ah, I don't think you have them on 88 though. Just go and check the flop. Pardon me. Um, I think we could like see bet here. I feel like check calling is probably fine as well. We don't want to play like a huge pot here. And I think we will just check market here on the turn. Um, we have some better hands that we can continue with than that, you know. And this is not the hand we want to be bluff catching here. I feel like we have some space in our range. On the river now, um, it's kind of interesting. I think we still just check fold, to be honest. Like, if he was bluffing, I think he would continue to turn on the turn a lot himself. So, yeah. I guess he was bluffing, just give up. Just, like, took a step on the flop. Maybe he had, like, a queen or something for value. Not really sure. 5-7. He just bet a 5. Yeah, I mean, I take that, you know. Helps me to get closer to those $30. And that is pretty nice, you know. It's pretty nice. Um, God, are you supposed to open this? I'm such a fetish. Look at this fucking guy, man. He's 50 buy ins. Holy moly. I guess it's a problem when you move up stakes, right? We can never play like really, really deep stack poker. But I guess it's good for me <laughs> because I don't feel too comfortable. Like, look at these guys, man. They have $6 here each. Alright. You're not playing this, baby. Uh, and somebody hits me up on Skype. Just give me one second. Let's mute that bitch. Mute that bitch. Mute that bitch. There we go. On three exit. Uh, he didn't jam. Look at, like, look at all these short stacks. This is fucking crazy. It's like some type of strategy behind it. I, I, like, I've heard of people talking about like short stacking online a couple of times, but never really know, knew what it was about. And yeah. Check 8 off, we're gonna fold. I think we open like check 9. Check 8, we fold there. 
This is just like my ranges that I made up <laughs> in my head in these spots. I just feel like how I feel would be good there, you know? So if Sirivigo are going to play one way or the other. Pretty good hand if we threw betting. Oh, he just left. He saw me on the table. I was like, nope. Nope, I'm already 0.75. I mean, I will, like I did like some typos in 88 before, it's always scary. And I feel like we will see bet here on the smaller end. You know we get value from like King Jack, Jack 10, while also just denying him some outs. On the King we have like an easy check and hopefully Rogue just goes check check and we chop it up as ace 4. We could have some plus C for sure. Um, but yeah, I have Kings in my range that I can call here so I will not call it the ace. Right? I think that is pretty damn reasonable way to like think about this. I mean the graph is nice, looks pretty decent. I'm just gonna defend the king for suited here and this is not our flop. I do think we just check full to be honest. He will just bear us off 12 from there and yeah he has just too many outs to often. We don't really like retraw to anything you know sometimes we just die at sometimes we're like basically flipping that spot but like he will just bear on the queen for example and we have to give up anyhow. A stack we're gonna open here. Let's give the 82 cent. It's like 75 cent on the button, 82 cent here, and three extremely early positions. Two calls. Like, this board doesn't hit like anyone too hard. I mean, he has like a lot of. Like, he has the most tens, I, I guess. Especially, so like, he has like 10 and suited check, 10 suited, 8 cents, all that stuff. And I think we just fold here if he leads. He's pretty likely to lead. Like, this is a pretty good spot from the bluff. You know, once I check the flop, I do not have many good hands. You know, like aces, I think I just see bad. So, if I do not have like pocket eights or like some queen check of diamond, probably just done here. But maybe you can just go to short on here and he's just like queen jack that he didn't bluff with. And he turns over like the king queen. He just decided to give up as well and we win. You know, it's possible. It is certainly possible. So, let's hope he goes for the check. Yeah. I think one of these guys would show that. Yeah, man, I want to say, fuck, I was so slow. One of these guys shows like pocket sixes, pocket fours, and we lose to that. I mean, we're in a little bit of a downstream right now, like for about like 10 hands, 8 hands maybe. Um, yeah, people are downstreams over several months, so I don't think 8 hands is too big. But I certainly hope it stops soon, you know. I'm already a little bit tilted. <laughs> Ah, just trolling obviously, just trolling. We got the queen eight. We got a gacha dude, what do you get? I think we will call him once here. Oh man, I wanna check raise him on the turn here. Yeah, it makes sense that he checks. Alright, check check river please. He will not very bad in ace here. I think this will go just check check so often and beat like pocket threes. That's my prediction here. But he just bets big. That's a little bit odd to me to be honest. Um yeah, I don't think we should call it the queen, even though we can block too much. Like, we block king queen, for example. But he would bet that on the turn, right? So, I don't feel like he has that many kings, you know, like ace king. Go check turn, makes sense. Um, Like, what bluffs does he have? Like, sevens. You gotta have sevens, you know, so. I'm not sure if people turn sevens into bluff there. But like it's cash game, right? Cash game players are better. They probably bluffed it with sevens. You know, MTT regulars are just like, check, maybe he has like, I don't know, pocket deuces. I could certainly have that though, given like the way we played it. You know, we call flop and then just give up. Hmm. Man. It's funny to be that inexperienced in something, even when you play poker for such a long time, you know? Give him the three bet here. Wait, X6 always just press pot, but I don't think that's the way to do it here. I think that's a little bit too big. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Putting a little bit of the pressure on. You know, I'm a man. I like to. I like. I'm a man. I don't know why I said that, but like, I'm a man who enjoys putting pressure on other people. You know, it's nice to be like three betting night and all this stuff. And I think in cash game you defend your big blind not as wide as in MTTs. You know, in MTTs I like snap defend a six eight I here. Um, I think in, in cash we can just fold. I'll be a little bit tighter with the big blind. I mean, guys, if you have any thoughts about, like, the game, probably, like, the advice I would get from you guys is just don't play cash, dude. But if you have any, like, solid advice, like, feel free to post along. I'm probably reading comments in this, for this video. 
Can't open the 63 sealed here on the button. The Ace 2006 is the guy that limped UTG. He seems to also pretty tight in the big blind, to be honest. What's pretty crazy about like cash games here, like on 888, is that you that the uh, HUD is not working, right? And I feel like, in, especially like Snap or Zoom Poker, it's really important that you have it, to be honest. So, yeah, it's like really, really important. Um, so yeah, for now we'll play on 888, just because I think the feeds are quite soft, but maybe we move on some other sites in the future, I'm not sure. But yeah, it is usually quite nice. I'm just gonna come in for the card here with third pair. Like this bot just hits my range way harder than his. So when he see bets, I think he has a lot of flash draws actually. So I will obviously just fall to another bet here on the turn. I feel like with like if he took a step with like queen check or check ten, I think he gives up a lot. So take it, sir. Right, getting a little bit old, man. It's time to flop another set and you know win a pot. <laughs> Alright, let's limp in here. That's at least nice. We got some limpers, you know, so we can play some parts. Ooh, baby. You don't flop a set. We take we take trips, you know. Trips is not quite a set, but still pretty good. Oh, and boarding up. I'll check again though. Um Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I supposed to bet there. Cause now we just call. Oh, this is a sacred row, by the way. But I guess we can lead now. But like, we will never get caught, but I guess it's still better than like raising turn. Oh, he got caught. Hopefully he didn't get caught by a check, guys. That would be sick. He had queen six, alright. At least we got that. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird, man. I feel like we played that hand really weird, but like, what, can, what could we do like differently there? Like, am I supposed to raise the turn there? Like, I just don't feel like I have bluffs, you know? Like, Maybe I should just lead turn, you know? That's like the only way I could see us having a bluff, like 8, 9 of hearts, maybe. But it's still like pretty damn awkward. Let's go for the 82 again. <laughs> the 82 center here. People are scared, man. Feels like they're folding a lot to the size. Alright. <laughs> Gonna limp this baby now. Um, I mean, I mean we can bet we can bear it again on an ace, a king, a nine, yeah. And sometimes just have come to fold a hand like king seven, so that's not too bad. I also pass out like zero next big band, and once we're in the big band, we will call this an episode and try to beat the next time. I'm not sure like how frequently we will do the series, guys. Um, but you know, let's just I decided to fire up kings to enter sash. Sounds like a really good idea. Let's win a big part, maybe. Let's win a big part. We get the call. I like it. Come on, I'm your duck. I'm your duck with the squeeze. Oh, the squeeze! It feels good. It feels good. I think we just ripped. Look at these stacks, man. Three red sizing is like super small, man. Like, we can't really induce with the stack size. We could just call as well, but yeah. Hopefully, we don't run into aces here. As I said, like, a squeeze size is pretty damn small, so we could certainly have aces. He can have aces as well. Um, come on, let's just win this hand. Wow. Ah! Ace! King! I. <laughs> what is he doing, man? What is he doing? I, and again, man, we end the session running under every I'm just a guy that, that never is lucky. That just never luck. <laughs> but that's okay, guys. We finish our first session here. Um, let's quit. Whoa, there we go. Wait, let's put this on here. There you go. This is the session. We like 100 hands. Made a profit of $15. We'll be back next time, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And yeah, enjoy your days, guys. Good luck at the table. See ya. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to press the like button down below and subscribe to the channel over here. Over here we have my social media links if you want to shoot me any messages, follow me around for updates, pictures when I'm going to live events and more. And over here some extra videos. If you want to check out more content, be sure to do so. Thanks so much for hanging out guys. Good luck on the tables. I will catch you next time.